Welcome back. Um, we just recently expanded team battles to feature up to 200 teams. And the other day they were looking for teams to participate. And here I am representing Team Blindfold, along with any teammates who want to join me. Nine, eight, oh, sorry about seven, that. Seven, six, five, we got four, simultaneous three, countdowns going on because I had another tab one. open. Sorry about that. All right, let's do it. Standing by for pairing. There we go. All right, good luck. Pawn B3. Perhaps not the most blindfold friendly opening ever. Um, hmm. Bishop B5. Yes, they're intending to hit my... Okay. Yes, now there's an opponent who will pick up the pace and play uh, very quickly against us. I'm going to defend this with my queen. Wait, is my bishop trapped? I don't recall it being trapped here. No, so they're just winning a pawn, which is okay. I've had worse fates out of an opening before than just simply losing a pawn. Um, yeah, bishop takes c6. So here, if I do pawn take, well, I have to take back. I'm not just going to give away a piece for nothing. Um, my bishop, did I move it to b4 or c5? I moved it to d6. Now it's on c5. All right. So there's no pawn e5 trick here. Um... Knight d4. I could take the knight, and then bishop would take back. Um, I could play bishop b4 check. I think they have another knight they could block the check with. Um, I could play bishop b7 to develop the bishop. That would be neutral enough. Um, castle. Alright. So... That removes whatever trick I might have against their king. Um, I guess we'll just develop our rooks normally. So normally I would play in Zen mode, but here I kind of need the move list, because relying on the little square highlights is not going to help me. Alright, so I take it that bishop takes queen is not legal, because there's something in the way somewhere. Um, a knight on d4. My bishop's on c5. Oh, but they have a bishop on b2 protecting this. Um, can I take on echo 4, I wonder? No. Well, I know this square... Oh, d5 is occupied by a pawn, because I played that earlier. Um, hmm. Alright. So, I'm struggling to find a good move here. Um. Wait, let's just take the knight and deal with the consequences later. So we're going to try to move my d-pawn up without hanging anything. Which I think requires me to defend my bishop on b7. Alright, they play d3. I can play d4 hitting their queen. They unhit their queen. Um, we're going to occupy the square with the knight. d2. All right, let's move the rook up and bring the other rook over. Knight c4 hits my queen. Retreat. I'm going to play rook g6 next. Um, wait, there's a pawn on e4, not e5. All right, so we'll play the knight up. Oh, their knight and queen control the square together, but I have a rook covering it, so I'm not outright hanging a piece. Um, 
Rook takes, prevents a queen exchange in the short term. All right, bishop c1, exploiting a pin. So I've got to unpin my rook. Uh, bishop f4, oh, that's nice. Okay, well played. We'll concede this at this point. For the curious, yeah, this just wins a rook. So my bishop has no future. Um, yeah, this is just devastating at this point. Yeah, engine says plus five to white. So let's play the next game. All right, good luck. Yeah, I'm not going berserk. I hope you're okay with that. If you're not, I'm sorry. There's only so much I can do here. Um, all right, so we're going to play the Italian opening. Pawn takes bishop b4, knight c3. I messed this up while practicing this morning. So after they take here, I play d5, bishop f6, rook e1, knight e7. That's the next move. And then... Um, Okay, knight e5's not book. Um, why is this not recommended? I think the knight's just too exposed on e5. Um, so, they have a knight on e4. Why is this knight e5 not recommended? I have to take the free piece. d6 protects their knight again. Um, hmm. Oh, they don't want to use the bishop to recapture. Right. That would be awkward. Alright, so we got a bishop on c4. Um, we could use it to check here. I don't remember how this goes. So if c6, I don't know if I take it. I think I do, or do I take the knight? Oh, the bishop d7 here. All right, but the knight is pinned. So exchanging bishops is not terrible for me here. Exchanging knights is not a good idea. Um, or is it? No, if they do pawn takes, their bishop is not free to move again. Yeah, they have to do pawn takes also. Um, right. Is queen takes d7 legal? No. I have a pawn somewhere in the way and d5, I think. So we're going to play our queen up and our other rook over. To s Oh! I was going to set up for an attack against the king's side, but it seems they've got that... Wait, do I have a piece on c1? Okay, that's awkward. Um, I think my knight on f3 supports the bishop I just moved to g5. Otherwise, they would have immediately captured this. I don't have a knight on f3. All right, but um, I've got a queen on... No. All right, where are my pieces? Um, my queen's on d3, isn't it? Yeah. I see. Uh, I guess we need to drop the rook back to try to fork the king and the bishop with the queen. Bishop f6 deals with the fork threat. Um, I guess we'll prepare an attack on the b-file. Queen takes d5. I guess I don't have a pawn protecting that. Um... We'll drop back to e2 and prepare bishop e3. So, actually we're down five points here. I could concede without embarrassment more than I have. Um, um, but yeah, queen d2 forces a queen exchange. Or it's, okay, yeah, so they take this. We're not going to win this game. Let's take a second to review it. 
Yeah, I thought I had a bishop or a knight floating around somewhere. I don't. Uh, so the moment where this turned was somewhere around here. Um, oh, bishop g5 was the moment. Instead, I need to play bishop f4 here um, to try to win the pawn. I probably do win the pawn, and it's not that great for me. So this in turn means I messed up somewhere around here. Knight e5 is not book. Knight takes e5 is winning. Oh, because if they play this, we can win the queen. If they don't play this, we're just winning a piece. All right. Yeah, I was greatly surprised. Let's see how our team's faring. No wins yet. I got to give it some time. All right, let's play d4, knight f6. Let's try to play King's Indian. That's going to end well, right? It'll end better than if I were to play some um, opening that didn't have as many moves that I could just play out of a book. So here in the King's Indian, we're able to... Well, we're able to chase this bishop. It's not recommended. But... Um, yeah, and then here I can defend my kingside pawn. Again, this is not the recommended line of play. But uh, I can play knight g8, pawn f5, pawn f4 is the threat. My other knight is actually on e7 instead of e5, so this is a bit weird. Um, okay, they've already started to play this line with... Oh, g4. Okay, that pawn is defended by the queen. That's surprising. Um, you don't usually see that here. I guess we'll play g5 to stop any threats, and we'll follow up with knight g6. And I'm not sure how we continue after this. h4. All right. Um, wait, my queen defends g5. I've not moved my queen yet. So we'll hold on to the g5 point with the queen here. h takes, h takes, knight f3. Okay, we can play f6 to hold on to the pawn again. And then get our king off the h file. Queen d2. They're building up for some attack that's not going to materialize. I've played way overly... I have a pawn? No, I have something... I have a bishop on g7. That's awkward. Um, i got to get the bishop out somehow. Um, hmm. Rook e8 might help activate my other pieces. Um, okay, they're intending an attack down the h-file. I can't play king g6 because my knight's on g6. Uh, bishop f8 is awkward. Um, but my knight has h6 defended, my other knight's on g6. I'm still okay for the time being. Um, yeah, we're going to try to get my knight on g8 and my bishop on f8 out of the way so my rook can get back to the h file. Bishop takes g5. How is this strong, though? I have a pawn protecting this. They have knight takes. I still have... I've got a knight here and a knight there. Which is odd. Um, wait, my king's on g7. This is actually pretty strong for them. Um, Alright, so... 
they're threatening rook h7, rook f7. I need to deal with the threat somehow. Knight f6 is an attempt to deal with rook h7. Um, the problem is that f6 is actually hard for me to defend. So... I think it goes without saying this is one of the more ambitious tournament things I've tried in a while. Um, so part of the purpose of this event was to promote the blindfold team and just raise awareness that it's out there. Um, so if there are people who enjoy this particular way of playing chess, uh, they can enjoy it together. Um, I sometimes enjoy this. I don't play it super often. Um, in fact, like, my using a blindfold to actually promote this team is in self optional. Like, there's no requirement that just because you're on the team says you have to use the blindfold, but I think it's more interesting this way. Queen h6. My king's on g7. Oh, king f7 is illegal. Because they have a pawn there. All right. And then they have queen h8 mate, right? Or queen takes g6 mate. Well, yeah, okay. We're not winning this. This is brutal. Um, so we have a bishop on e7. Um... Wait, I can't move my bishop to d6 either, because there's still a pawn on d6. Alright, I guess I'll try to kick the queen and see how that results. Although I think I know how this is going to end. Um, I think I still have a pawn defending a knight here. I think the problem though is queen h7 mate? No. I don't have anything defending this knight. Alright, well played. Good game. Yeah, oh, my knight was actually on f6 and g6. So this is the point of pawn g5, as I still had a knight here. I thought my knight was, like, back on... I'm not sure where. But, um, yeah, I just kind of rolled over here. Um... Knight f4 would be reasonable in quite a few positions. I just didn't think it was necessary. Actually, yeah, knight f4 is a great way for me to get my king out of here. And then move my other knight up to g6. So my bishop could stay on g7 the entire time. Usually white attacks on the queen side. I was expecting a queen side attack. I did not expect these series of sacrifices. Um... But it worked quite well in the game, so well played. Alright, we get the white pieces this time. Uh, c6. We'll take this and get into... What's this called again? This thing that could arise from quite a few queen pawn openings. Um, Alright, so... Usually I try to save a tempo and not play bishop d3 early. Um, but here I'm not so concerned about that. It's about just not hanging stuff. Castle kingside. All right, we're going to defend my bishop. I'm guessing a6 and b5 are going to land shortly. Okay, that's strange. Um, why would you do this? So I should bring my bishop somewhere useful. They've not played h6. Let's play bishop g5. Hopefully I have a knight on f3. Well, hopefully their knight is still on f6. I think so. Pretty sure it is. Or I'm just hanging my bishop. Alright, a6. Let's play the rook out. And they're going to play b5. We drop the bishop back. Bishop b7. Let's take this diagonal. 
And then the trick is that if they've completely forgotten where the pieces are, the queen h7 is mate. Um, it's a gamble worth taking. <laughs> oh, it's checkmate. Sweet. All right. I've gotten away with this thing more times than I'm proud to mention. But, yeah. This is such an unusual maneuver in this opening. But in Blitz Chess, it works so well. But it actually sets up a legitimate threat, which is Bishop takes f6. And there's not a really good way to meet it. Um, they could play pawn g6, so that weakens the king's side. But that's not something they want to play, having played pawn e6. So this checkmate is kind of an afterthought here. So that puts our team on the board. Oh, thank goodness uh, folks are joining Team Blindfold. Um, yeah, because I'm not going to be able to carry this alone. I can try. It just might be a bit of an uphill battle. Um, it should be five. The other good news about... Oh, well that's a mouse slip, but I will need every advantage I can get here. Um, okay, we're going to hit this bishop. Alright, whatever. You don't want to move the bishop, I don't want to take it. So you can play that game. I was calling king f1 a mouse slip, but perhaps it's part of some strategy. Um, so we're going to defend the e5 pawn so I can take the bishop on b5. Uh, this might still be a gambit. Whatever. Wait, do I have a piece? I have a bishop on e7. I have to drop back this way. That's embarrassing. Knight takes e5. Yep. Alright, whatever. At least I've not hung everything. Just a pawn. Um, so there's a pawn on b5 now, which is a bit awkward to deal with. We'll play c6 in a minute. There's c6. If pawn takes, we have knight takes. And if knight takes, I think we can take back with the pawn. I think I'm not getting mated here. All right, rookie one. Um, where do I want my bishop? I want it somewhere where I can remember where it's at, but d7 is going to be the square for it for now. Just this overly defensive move. Um, queen d3. So I think if I'm trying to get my queen over here, because they've played g3, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah, they have played g3. So I can play queen f6 with an intent of somehow getting over i can't go through h4 of course but um something like this this is my target i don't know how i'm gonna get there i could try this but their queen on well the queen on d3 doesn't actually protect against this at all um so knight e2 tries to discourage hmm, whatever it is that i'm planning um hmm. I try to double rooks. Knight f4 doesn't hit anything directly. I have a pawn protecting d5. So I don't need to worry about knight takes d5. My bishop's on d7, my rooks are doubled here, my queen's on f6. So we just have a really compact not particularly useful shape. Um, okay, we'll take the light squares with my queen defending this, hitting their queen. Queen d2. It's a defensive move. Um, I guess... Oh, this is check. Wasn't there king on some other square? No, they moved it up to g2. All right, it's over on h2 now. Have I played h6 yet? Nope, h6 is now played. Wait, their queen on d2 protects uh, f2. Otherwise, I'd have a nice shot here. Um, 
But since they're queens on d2, this hits uh, g2 as well as h5. So I'm simultaneously chasing their king and chasing their knight. Knight of four actually does deal with both threats, but is prone to g5, which I had been preparing. And so now I have got pawn hitting this, a queen hitting that. Their queen's over, doing nothing here. Their rook's here, my rooks are doubled. Um, queen e2. So they're going to give me back some of this material that um, queen takes. Bishop takes. My rooks are doubled. We have a pawn on f4. They play g takes. Where is their rook located? They've got a rook on e1. They've not moved the rook off of e1. My rooks are doubled here. I can't take. I guess there's a pawn on e2 or something. All right. No, that's illegal. Um, strange. Can I take on e3 or e4 or something? Hopefully I'm remembering enough of this position. Probably not. Rook takes e3, rook takes e3, f takes e3. So now we're down a bishop for a rook, and we're down on time. Um, Where's my king? Here's my king. Let's use it. Rook takes a7. All right, yeah, they're just promoting over there. It's not looking good for me. Uh, rook c7. All right, yeah, they're mopping up the rest of my pawns. We'll call it there. Well played. All right, we get the black pieces this game. Pawn e4. Let's do a Sicilian. Why not? Pawn e5. We've already spooked our opponent. Let's play pawn d5. Alright, so we're playing a Sicilian where they have no way to support their e5 pawn. I mean, their queen could support it. It's just, it's like a French here, except that they don't have a d pawn anymore. So this e pawn should make for a nice target to hit over and over. So play pawn e6 to stop them from playing pawn e6. I still have a pawn on d5, pawn on e6. Uh, their queen's on f4, so we're going... Are they threatening a mate? They're trying to set up a checkmate. Not cool. <laughs> I mean, it's clever. Um, I guess the only way to stop this is h6. Or the easiest way to stop it is h6, and then I could play my knight out to g6. Knight c3. Alright. Um, sure, let's bring this knight out to hit this pawn. Uh, my knight's temporarily blocking defense of d6, but it's going to move away to g6 in a second. So knight b5 to d6 is not critical. Uh, g4. Well? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's play knight g6. And bring the bishop out to e7. Just pretend, like... I don't see how they could really power a kingside attack with this. Maybe there's a way, I'm just not seeing it. I just have to be careful not to put my queen or bishop on squares that would just outright hang it. They're offering up the e5 pawn as a sacrifice. They have not played rook e1. They don't have a pawn on d4 anymore. This is illogical. Uh... I think we'll take the free pawn before they find a way to, like, defend it. 
All right, so then we play bishop d6 next. And try to build a kingside attack. Um, if they... Wait, don't I have knight f3 winning the queen? Even if they castle kingside... I, oh, okay, they've seen it. I should have seen that earlier. My bishop protects my knight. I was so focused on defense, I forgot to look for orcs. Um, my bishop's still on c8. Bishop e3 is reasonable. Um, so... I've got a knight still on e5. Um, this is one weird Sicilian opening. Wait, is my pawn still on e6? Yeah, it's still on e6. I've not moved it anywhere yet. So it's still blocking my bishop. Rick b1. Alright. Um... Yeah, let's remove these pieces from the board so I don't have to worry about remembering where they're at. Um, I do want to move my bishop off of c8. I just can't find a good square for it right now. Uh, I might play e5 to open the position. Queen takes e3. All right, let's play e5. If they do queen takes, I might have a way to pin the queen. But actually, they don't have a pawn taking it. So yeah, I can just... Oh, they could take on d5. Do they have a bishop or something supporting the knight? They must. Else why would they do this? I thought I have a queen protecting that square. Queen takes e3. I'm not... Is my queen somewhere else? Where's my queen? Where'd it go? I can just take this. There's a piece in the way. I don't know if... Like, I could click any... No, okay. I don't... Only have pieces on squares where I can select that square. So I have a bishop on d6, or something on d6. Um, yeah, let's get this bishop developed. Maybe it was a queen on d6. That would be weird. That would not make any sense, but... Um, c4 defends the knight. Um... Let's exchange. Can I take this now? No. That's a bishop then. Um, let's bring the rook to e8 and bring out the other rook. Bishop b5. Mm -hmm. Alright. We'll put the rook on a different square. Then. Oh. The queen is on d8. Alright. I still have a pawn here. So this is awkward. Bishop c4. Aiming for my king. Um, I guess we'll hit the bishop. I don't know, double my rooks on the e-file or something, or push my e-pawn, or, like, what should I do here? Um, we'll play a6 and b5 to scare their bishop away, although it's just going to hop into d5. Unless I have a knight protecting d5. They castle. I'm going to hope I have a knight protecting d5 and the bishop has to retreat. Um... 
my queen's on c7. Yeah, they have to retreat. Um, I can still chase this bishop, though, since I have a knight on f6. Bishop takes. I don't have a knight on f6. All right. That's cool. Let's just say that's part of the plan. Um, we're going to pin to win the bishop, if we can. Rook a1. Wait, so I can just take this, right? Let's so say I have a queen, rook, king, pawn, pawn, pawn. Uh, I don't see a mate. Queen f3. I'm going to try to hack down this fortress around their king. G takes h5. Uh, I don't know whether or not my queen defends the rook. Hopefully it does. Queen g2. Um, g takes h5. Okay, we're going to hit the pawn on h5. Rook a c1. We've hit the pawn. Take it. Takes a6. Get the king out of dodge. It's my other rook. Lost on time. <sighs> Good effort. Good effort. All right, it's team blindfold. Uh, I've got two points. One of my teammates has got six points. It's a great endeavor. Um, all right, so let's play an exchange Slav, just because we can't mess that up, right? Yeah, we'll see. All right, e6. Pawn, oh, knight f6. Okay. I was, wait, I still have a bishop in the way. Wait, if they're... They've played c takes already, so I could play this check and not lose a bishop. And then I can take the knight on c6 and exchange my bishop for a knight instead of just losing it. Yeah. Every exchange is one piece closer to me not losing the game. Um, so, we'll take some solace in this. Um, where's my queen? Is it still on d1? It's still on d1. Um, with their knight on f6... Wait, I've already taken their knight on c6, so get the knight on e5, rook e1. I've played rook e1, I've played queen f3. Yeah, they're starting to notice that I'm building something of an attack. Um, it's not the greatest attack ever, but it is an attack. Uh, g4. Let's keep hitting the f7 square. Oh, they've already castled. So hitting f7 is not going to mate them anyway. Um, I have a bishop on d2, so it's actually supporting a g5 push. Have they played h6 this game? They played a6, not h6. Alright, we'll kick the knight out of... Okay. Um... 
Yeah, we'll just keep attacking. This is nice. Until it all explodes at the same time. They have not played Rook D8. So yeah, I can play Pawn takes G7. And I've not lost my queen yet. Well, my queen's on f3, not on d1 anyway. Um, I just can't remember if they have a pawn on e6 or something, preventing bishop h6, queen f6 ideas. All right, do I not have a bishop that can just take this? I do not. All right, we'll have to react to this pawn takes a1 threat then. Although I might have had this promotion with check. I probably did. Where's my bishop? Where'd it go? D2? All right. Um, try to build an attack over here out of nothing. <laughs> um... I guess queen h5 and g6 is a threat. Although they might have... Okay. Yeah, my king's not in a great spot. Um, let's tuck the king on f1. Queen takes h2. Oh. Well, that's cool. Um, let's try to trap the queen. It's not going to work, but let's try. If queen f4, king g2, and rook h1 almost traps it? Hmm. Queen h4. Hmm. Yeah, let's put the king in, on e2, in fact, and so we could just make sure that we aren't going to get mated with a rook and queen on the king's side. We get mated it's going to be some other side of the board um now they do threaten queen takes f4 because of this damn pawn man that was a cool concept pity it didn't work out all right back we go i'm going to continue holding out to this pawn threatening rook h1 and really nothing to follow um Queen d5 check forces me to exchange queens. Um, does bishop d4 allow me to play bishop f6 next and hopefully not hang stuff? Oh, they just take it. Never mind. All right, I have lost. Good game. Let's take a look. Yeah, I needed to... Oh, the bishop couldn't have gone anywhere in any event. Uh, taking on b2 would have been best, but I'm hopelessly lost here. Um, a few moves ago, this was interesting. But yeah, this fork forces me into a very terrible endgame. Uh, queen h4. Uh, oh, bishop e5 checkmates in six moves. I missed that. Did you see it? Because I missed it. Apparently I'm like super winning until I drop everything. Because their king is so exposed. Um, yeah, I should have just taken the pawn. I thought they had the rook on e8, not on g8. Rook g8 is very strange. I thought if the rook was on e8 or f8, this would not work so well. But it's not. It's on g8. And they have this bishop that they've not moved either. So that's how that turned out. All right, good luck. Let's play just a normal queen pawn opening. Um, and by that, I mean, I guess we're playing a London. Sure. A3, and then we'll just bring all our pieces in a very normal shape. That's very easy to understand and predict what's going on. Uh, castle, all right, we'll take the E5 square. c4 checked with the c-pawn 
on c5, we retreat. So this has been seen a thousand times before. Um, oh, because they did bishop takes, I perhaps should have done my bishop takes instead of this. Um, yeah, this is awkward. Am I dropping a pawn if I do this? No, they have only one knight that can take on g6. Um, okay. Is g6 hanging? g6 is in fact hanging. Let's develop our pieces around that. Uh, my bishop's still on d6 or e7? Where'd it go? d6 is where my bishop went. Um, where's my other knight? I previously played knight f6, bishop f5, bishop d6, knight bd7, uh, bishop c7. Alright, so my knights are in f6 and d7. Um, no, I don't have a knight on f6 because I just played rook f6. Um, f4. So I suppose I need to reinforce f5 before trying anything too tricky here. Uh, so we'll reinforce this so we could try rook g6, trying to hit the g3 pawn. Queen h4. They've seen my trick. Not so much a trick, but just I need something to attack. And this pawn seems like a candidate. They did play h4 earlier, right? No. They've not played h4. Alright, so my moves are just strange. Um, could we bring this rook to e8? Oh, right. It's not supported by the other rook. But they have played g3 anyway. Uh, d5. Is there a target here? Are they hitting something? Where's my knight? Knight f8. Knight f8, there's no checkmate. Um, I guess we're going to play king h8 and find out where stuff's at. Bishop takes f6 was the threat. Um, Didn't see that. All right, knight's on f8, the rook's on e8. Why is this not legal? There's something in the way. Oh, I, that's my piece on e6? This must be my pawn, then. Um, having played g takes... Oh, I've got pawns on f5 and f6. All right, fine. Um, that makes sense. Do they have a rook on e1? I think they did move rook e1 earlier. Yes. No, they don't have that there. So we can triple our pawns on the f file. Uh, okay. Oh, I still can't take. Alright, well played. Yeah, I just hung uh, too many pieces here. I don't have any way to attack. d6 is nice. I forgot my bishop retreated back to c7 earlier. Uh, so even though I could play f3 here, which I didn't see, to be honest. Um... Yeah, I have no way to continue my attack, and I'm down a rook and then some, so uh, resignation's more than appropriate in this position. Alright, uh, where are the white pieces? Let's do it. Again, if anybody wants to join in, 
Um, chances are you can score just about as well as I can, so um, feel free to give it a try. It's all good fun. Our team might not win this event, but we can have fun trying. Um, so I'm going to play... Oh, I was going to play queen e3 next to stop bishop c5, but they beat me to it, so I'll exchange bishops instead. Um, okay, we'll exchange bishops this way if that's what you prefer, sure. And I'm going to play queen e3 and f4. Probably want to bring my knight out to d2 and then f3. All right, I don't have time for that. We're just going to exchange everything and not hang all of my pieces. So possibly they could double on um, my d pawn if I still have one here. Um, okay, they do castle king side. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I guess we'll pursue the king with a somewhat kind of sort of not really that tricky idea. Um, the idea is knight f6 winning the queen. Unless, yeah, we got it. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> we got one, guys. We gotta enjoy this tournament while we still can. Um, yeah, in normal play, I think I'd probably just do f4 and not try to do the cheapo, but... You know, we'll take it. All right, our team is in 177th place. Even a single victory would propel us greatly upward in the standings. Um, yeah, we're going to play an exchange slab. This way we can remember where the pieces are at in a very, very predictable shape. All right, I'm going to play h3 at some point and ask them, do I want to exchange? They don't. Uh, they've not played h6. So I'm going to offer bishop for knight. Knight bd7. All right, we'll defend our bishop. Bishop d6. Actually, let's offer bishop for bishop, if that's what you prefer. Sure. Queen c7. Alright, we'll do it this way. Where's my knight? Is it in c3 still? Yeah. Um, Rook a d1. Alright, they attack down the c file. Um, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not hanging my queen if I move this knight, I'm just hanging the rook. Not a very important difference. Um, wait, oh, what's on e2? Is that a bishop? Yeah, that's my bishop on e2. Alright, so my intended move of knight e5 at first glance is not terrible. Um, I need c3 defended, so we're gonna... Okay, rook takes is not possible, so queen takes is happening. Um, this drops to c3, but uh, that's okay. Let's get our rook over to the king's side, unless it's hanging. They might pin... they don't pin my rook. Alright. Let's push both rooks and the queen over to the side of the board. I must have a valuable piece on c3, or else they wouldn't have done that. Yeah. All right, uh, knight e4. So we'll attack the knight. Knight df6. They got two knights still. Damn. <laughs> All right. 
That got more interesting. Oh, I don't have pawn e5. My other pawns moved to f4. That's a problem. They must have a pawn on d5 still, right? Yeah, c takes, d5. Still have a pawn on d5. <sighs> so my attack amounts to nothing. All right. My queen is on e2, so if I play g4, it actually supports an attack that's not nothing, but it's not going anywhere. I guess we'll... Wait, I can't play rook h3. I have a queen or something in the way. I have a pawn on h3, that's why. Um... Well, this is awkward. I guess we'll just pretend to threaten rook takes knight. Um, I don't know what else we do here. Rook c7. I'll take this. Play f5, even though I don't see it leading to anything concrete. Um, maybe f6 is somehow useful. Rook fc8. Oh god. It's coming. It's gonna hurt when it lands. Um, unlike this, which is just an empty threat. But we're making it because it's better than no threat. Rook takes c2. We'll get the king queen out of harm's way for this tempo. Uh, their knight's still on e4, still threatening to take on f6. Maybe somehow I'm making a threat. That's my hope. Okay. Where's their king? They've castled. I could sack to take the knight, and their queen's on c7? d6. Yes, I don't have any real threat that can be pulled off right now. Tuck the king on h2, but this is just me running away. Rook takes b2. Right. Um, fine. This knight is spooking me, so we're going to remove it. D takes. I thought they could have taken with an F pawn. I guess not. Alright, we threaten the H pawn if there is one. They've already played G6, so. Um, our rook supports F6. They've castled. We're supporting an attack on the king's side. Chances are they could just play. Well, no, they've moved. They still have a rook on c8. Rook cc2. Yeah, that's a very swift attack. I need to defend it, and this drops my pawn. Um, rook e2. Alright, what's the trick here? Queen f8. Oh, that's the trick. Okay, well played. Um, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to continue playing here. I have a rook somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it's at. Um, yeah, we'll concede this. We're losing on time. Oh, we have a knight somewhere. And they're promoting. Yeah, we're playing, we're representing Team Blindfold today. So, I thought, what better way to represent them in our, in our 255 members um, than to actually play these games blindfolded. Um, so if you're like super attached to your chess rating, this is perhaps not the best exercise. If you're attached to winning at all, um, this might not, I don't know. 
This could be a healthy exercise to do once in a while, but not every single game. Um, but yeah, if we can make it past the one hour mark and get through games, um, that'll be good. There is a saying that no opponent is an idiot, and that's very true. Um, you can't take any opponent for granted. They'll all try to play their best game. And so against them, you can try to figure out what their style is, how they play. If there's any kind of obvious weakness that you can exploit, try to exploit it. Um, all right, so... I don't see any problem with bringing my knight out. C takes. Alright, so they have a pawn on c3. I just gave away a piece for a pawn to a 1100 opponent. Um, wait, why can I not move this? I've got a queen on d8. Still have not moved the queen. Alright, we'll play it up to d7. Rook a d1. Okay, fine. We'll play the queen over to e8. I don't remember how safe these pieces are. Alright, knight to b3. Well, queen takes queen is out. We'll exchange rooks here. We should not be trying to exchange pieces since we're losing. Um, but... I'm not finding any tactic to get me out of this bad position. Um, so the queen on e2, if I could... Oh. Knight takes c5. They just took my pawn. I didn't have a bishop there. I'd be concerned if I were two pieces down. I'm still concerned here, but I might be able to have some counter chances. It would help to know the actual material count here, not just the material difference. Um, got a knight on d5. They've played rook d1 and queen e2. Didn't they play this b3 super early? No, I'm thinking of a different opponent who played b3. This opponent has not played b3. Um, so they have to play knight a5 to escape my rook. c takes d5. Okay, my queen's on e7. Oh, they took another knight. I see. Rook takes d4. Alright, so, yeah, my ideas of trying to do stuff with a knight are kind of out. Um... My rook just took on b7. Could I take this pawn? No, I cannot take the pawn. Alright, good game. Well played. Yeah, they just played a really solid game throughout, um, and I did not. So how did this go? We exchanged pieces. Oh, knight d4 was my huge blunder here. I should just develop my queen and rooks. Um, but yeah, after this, they just played... Oh, knight d5 was not reasonable then. So I hung both of my knights to their pawns, because I'm not sure where all the knights and pawns are at. That was not great. Alright, we got a 2100 rated opponent. Play the best we can. Um, yeah, also, the later you are in a tournament, like, the more you're participating in it, the more you're going to find yourself against opponents who have, like, who are in it for the long haul. Who are going to try to win every single game and play very well. All right, G6. Ah, no G6 trap this time. All right. Wait, can I not move my king out? I guess I have to play this first. There is a trap if they play pawn g6 early there. Um, yeah, it's not happening this game. 
knight d7. Wait. Have I? I already played, oh, I played castle. I want to play my bishop back here to f1. And just cower in fear, because uh, I'm not sure where the pieces are at. Um, I think I do want to play c3 at some point, in case, like, somehow their bishop could teleport through the pawn. Um, oh, have I already played c3? No, I've got a knight on c... No, I played pawn c4. That's why c3 is not legal. Uh, okay, to get the bishop to move without hanging the b2 pawn, we've got to move this rook first. But they might have bishop f5. Let's see, knight of eight. So we'll play our bishop out to c3, hopefully not hanging anything in the process. We've got a knight on c3 still. So play that back. Okay, their knight defends the f4 pawn, so let's see if we can control this square. Um, they've taken this square. They've won that without a contest. Well done. Um, yeah, my knight's on... Yeah, this is a really strange knot for me to try to pull myself out of. They've got stuff located places like this, and my knight's here, and I can't take that. Um, wait, so this gives me some freedom, no? Why would they do that? I don't understand. Maybe there's some trick here, but I'm predicting bishop takes, and then we'll exchange on... Oh, they have a rook there. Good thing my queen's not on e1. Or is it? Rook e1, bishop f1. I've played a rook here. This is okay. We exchange bishops. My queen protects e1, so I could play knight c3 next and start to dig myself out of this. Unless there's some nasty trick here somewhere. Have I missed something? They have a pawn on f4. Rick a e8. What? There are rooks on e4. I can take the rook. Um, that said, this position probably sucks, but... Dude, I've not hung a piece just yet. Let's get a little bit excited about this. Uh, king f8. Why that? Um, hmm, so they've doubled their rooks. I'm not understanding this position. Their pawn on f4 is not helping them. Queen d4 check, wins my bishop. All right. Queen takes f2. And yeah, well played. Nicely done. Yep, they got my bishop. And all the rooks are staged to liquidate, and they're up a bishop in a position where I have no attack. Uh, so, nicely done. All right, knight f3, d5. Maybe I could take the center by force this time. We're just going to build up a really nice, large center. And hope nothing ever, nothing bad ever happens to it. 
Um, we'll use our knight the same way they used both their knights. We've got one knight out. We have pawns here. Pawn e3. Um, okay, we're going to play pawn e5 next, I guess. Okay, they finally played pawn d4, stopping me from playing pawn e5. I could, all these positions I could be taking on c4, but I don't want to deal with the complications. So we're just going to let the pawn just sit there on c4. Maybe this time if they play c5, I'll remember where my bishop's at. Or maybe put it on e7, so I don't forget. Um... Yeah, so we had a tricky move order. This yeah, we're gonna put it back on e7 this time and not forget where it's at. Not like that other game where I put it on c7 and then they eventually got a pawn on d6 and bad stuff happened. Um, all right, the g3 is strange. Bishop g2 is strange. Well, it makes sense with g3, but um. We've got another knight to support our knight here, right? Yeah. Knight df6 supports the knight on e4. Um, knight e5. Oh, we've just given up the e5 square. If you're playing a stonewall shape, you need to not give up the e5 square. Uh, it's kind of important that you don't give up that square. Because it's impossible to get it back. We'll try to get it back. 92. Alright. Um, okay, we're going to fight for this square. They play bishop b2 earlier, right? They open this with b3 and bishop b2. Yeah, so now they're ejecting my knight from e4. It has to retreat. And they're welcoming it back to e4, so I'll put it back. Um, yeah, a stone wall is not... I mean, some way it is useful, but... It's not the thing I want to try to win. Um, Rook b1. Hmm... The fewer knights I have, the better. Because bishops and rooks and queens move in predictable shapes. Knights could go anywhere. It's a lot to keep track of. Alright, they're attacking c6 again. I was trying to... somehow assert dominance over these squares so I don't have to worry about c6. Now I have to worry. Wait, is e6 loose? I've got a pawn on e6. Nothing's... I mean, my rook, if I have one, might be defending it. Um, so where did my knight go just a second ago? Oh, back to e4 it went. And I exchanged my other knight on e5. Um, yeah, we'll defend our c6 pawn. Not that it needs to be defended, but, it, um, our opponent is trying to do very solid, logical things here, uh, defying their rating. Their rating must come from a tactical ability or something, I guess, because positionally what they're doing makes a lot of sense, other than letting my knight back into e4. Other thing other than knight e4 made sense positionally. So there's got to be a tactical hole that we can hope to exploit, if not actually exploit. Um, so I think my queen's defending. Yeah, my a pawn. Um, I'll try to undermine. I mean, the knights here, the pawns there, the other pawns out here. 
So this is why I'm trying to use my queen and pawns to chisel away at. Um, where are my rooks? I castled, so my one rook's on f8. The other one's still on a8. So I could actually take on b4. Um, I'd be exploiting a pin on the a file. At least until they do that. Um, yeah, let's take here before something bad happens. All right, and now I've got a rook on f8. Uh, there are knights still on d4. I want to connect my rooks. <laughs> Solve the capture. Nice. Uh, yeah, solve the captcha is a good username. If we don't win this, this might be the last game. It's been an interesting tournament this far, anyway. Um, and it just goes to show there's only so much I can do to promote a particular idea. Um... So, my knight's still on e4. I have a bishop on e7? Yeah. They have a queen on c2. Just in the name of remembering where my pieces are at, I'm going to play knight g5 to try a knight exchange. Hopefully they haven't played h4. Oh, they did play f4. So this just hangs the knight to a pawn. Um... Hmm. We're going to try to win this. Uh, so how do we do that? We do that by remembering which piece is which. We're going to defend our rook on a8. And try to... Oh, the rook is defending their other rook. Apparently, no, the b-file wasn't open just yet, but they're trying to open the b-file and profit from opening it. Knight d2. Wait. Uh, I have a queen on c2. Right. So, since the queen's on c2, I could play rook a3 without losing my rook. And then bring my other rook over to support it. Oh, just kidding. Uh, that does lose my rook. This is what I get for trying to win, instead of repeating moves. Um, alright. We can pin the bishop to the queen, is what I meant. Okay, well, I'm just not seeing any of what happened there. Yeah, could we have possibly ended on a better note? I don't think so. Wait, so rook a8... Okay, yeah. We could just pretend that's a mouse slip, but yeah, our opponent played well. Um, they played a nice, solid game. Um, so perhaps, um, even though we didn't win this tournament, I don't even have a pause button. Usually when I'm doing this, I get a pause button that allows me to go back and just view the tournament and knock it in next pairing. Um, we're going to go back and try not to get paired. It's not, uh, we're probably going to get paired immediately, but or it's by too late. All right. Um, I guess after the next game, we'll pause. You just got here? All right. We'll play another game just for you. Just for you. Okay, they've played a Karo. We're going to try to exchange bishops immediately. So immediately they have an advantage, just to make it fair. Um, if I... No, we're going to bring the knight out. Um, and kick the knight with g4 coming next. Bishop e7. All right, we'll bring our other knight over to f1. And then play g4. Oh, they beat us to the punch, so... 
we'll just exchange knights. I don't know why they volunteered for this, but fine. We'll kick this bishop. And I guess play... I don't know what. My queen's not on this diagonal. My queen is on d3. Yes, so... Um, kick this again. Should take c1. Rook takes f6. We'll take on e f6. Um, my knight's still on f1. Nothing's hanging just yet. Um, hmm. So we have a pawn protecting this square. We just doubled rooks to hit this pawn. <sighs> Wait. Do they have a bishop on c8 or something? Like, they their one bishop took on c1. Their other bishop... F5. No, they took on d3 with the other bishop. They have not castled, so their king's still on e8. And they just play queen h6. Against my threat of trying to take their e-pawn and fork the... Okay. It's not legal, because I have something in the way. No. It's not legal because I don't know why. Uh. Wait. How did this end up with a king on e2? That wasn't a rook. Okay. Uh, that explains some things. I still have a bishop on f1. Man, this is confusing. Um, Alright, we'll try to castle then. Um, hmm. Rook a e8, check. We'll get... Well, let's not even check. Somehow. Because they still have a pawn on e6. Now the pawn's no longer on e6. Alright. Um, yeah, we need to take this before something bad happens. Knight takes, hits my queen. Thankfully, they've already exchanged off their bishop, so I don't have to worry about losing my queen to, like, some bishop here. Knight g4 check. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Um. Wait. King f... King e2 is illegal somehow. Um, wow. I can't take this this way. Rook takes e1. Oh, I have no idea where my pieces are at. Um, we'll pause, so then we can go back and look at the last game and see what happened. Uh, so our last game... Oh. So we tried to castle at some point, and ended up with playing something that didn't make sense. I think I just forgot to castle, honestly. Yeah, here I thought I had already castled and done other stuff. Um, what a strange game. Um, yeah, should we spectate some games now? Perhaps that might be a better investment of time than continuing to play. How many did we get to participate in this team? We got uh, three people to participate this time around. Three people to participate, and we did it for 80 minutes. Um, played 14 games and have one win. Um, well, that's uh, two wins. So my objective this tournament was to win one game. I won two games. That's not bad. Um, alternatively, just because we enjoy using or playing blindfold chess doesn't mean that every game has to be blindfolded. So let's go back and, like, actually win a lot now. Um, this should be a lot easier than it used to be. No, there's a setting right in the user preferences. 
Like, every user can choose to play blindfold. They don't have to, but they can choose to. Um, so here I am representing Team Blindfold, but uh, I've given up the blindfold after having lost 12 games out of 14. We're just going to see if we can win some games now, which still might be very difficult to do, because there are quite a few really strong players in this tournament. But yeah, the handicap was possibly way too much. So I can't feel too bad. I gave it a best effort, did everything I could to promote my team. I'd hoped more people would join us and do similar activity. And honestly, it doesn't look like that's happening. So, um, either way, chess is still fun. I do recommend from time to time trying a blindfold game. You'll learn things about pawn structure, um, and your opponents will do things that you've never seen them do before. Um, so my knight's aiming for here. Oh, I could draw these shapes if I know. I forget how it is that I've managed to draw a shape that's not normally a legal chess shape. Um, there is some way, like a control key, I thought, but I guess not. Or is it a uh, control right click? No, that's coloring. There's some way about it. I forget. Uh, so... Yeah, let's uh, just push and try to take this out. So with our knight on d3, it'll be easier for us to attack. Yeah, I don't even want to take this off. Like, my knight is much too strong up here for me to consider offering it for just the game of a pawn. Um, all right, so we intend this. We're also threatening that. We're also threatening this. So, looks like this is the threat we choose this time. And this falls next. All right, so we've just won a piece this way. Man, putting on the blindfold really makes things harder. So we're going to try to mate the king in the corner. Or just take the free piece and then rookie one mate. All right, good game. But yeah, that's... No opponent's an idiot. Opponents will find lots of resourceful moves, regardless of their rating. Um, but yeah, after the first hour in the tournament, you're going to find players um, who... Um, well, at least the ones who stick around are having a good day. And the ones who don't stick around might not be having a good day. Yeah, this makes some sense. It's logical. Like, there for a second I was considering completely dropping out of the tournament. And then I did this more shameful thing of, uh, like, I'm playing on Team Blindfold, but not using a blindfold, because I just got tired of losing every game. So, maybe someday we'll get better at playing with a blindfold. Uh, I've practiced quite a bit. It hasn't helped any. Um... But yeah, the more 
pawn structures and things like that you're familiar with, um, the better you'll do at chess in general. Uh, yeah, this is spooky. We're going to offer the G pawn. But this really is just a mechanism to let me push this through. And we're going to smash this king's side open. Yeah, so threat is g5 and then taking here. Um, yeah, let's play the threat. If you play correspondence chess, you'll find more uh, a lot of tactical motifs there as well, which apply equally well in standard games. All right. Let's check the king. Well, check does mean king. Um, so, how do we exploit this extremely exposed king? Um, that doesn't work. It's cute. It's not effective. Man, wow, this is disappointing that I don't have a more fearsome attack. Like, I've got a nice attack. I just wish I had something that was just completely devastating. Wait, what? How's that not mate in one? Okay. Still checkmate, just not mate in one. We'll take it. Yeah, there's no requirement on any of the players in this tournament to actually use a blindfold, so... The best way I can represent this team is by doing the opposite of what we stand for. Go figure, right? Either that or I can practice more. Um, I don't know how to improve at playing blindfold. Practice does help, but... Uh, it's not gotten me too far. All right, if knight takes, then knight takes and bishop takes here. Um, I'm winning at least some material. Oh, wait, I missed. <clears throat> the bishop could have just pinned the knight, right? I think there was a better way for me to do this. And this is still decent. Especially if they just give me this. Um, now, there is a line in the Danish Gambit where this knight's not here. And black has this counter trap. But it's actually just a main line. It's playable for both colors. But yeah, that particular situation is different. And this tournament gets easier when you're playing good moves. Alright, so here we are with the main line, two knights defense. Um, isn't this playable here? This is like super theoretical somehow, and I'd like to better know it. So we'll see if our opponent could give us a quick lesson in how this thing goes. Assuming they studied it. Um, wait, what? Alright. I don't think that's the theoretical line. We might see that one in the database. Uh, for a Lee Chess Player database. All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, 
I'm curious if this is really where they want their bishop. The bishop can't defend this anymore. So this is hanging. If the knight moves, we exchange knights, I take the rook. If they don't move the knight, I just take it. So at this point, yeah, it's hard. I mean, probably using the rook to defend the knight was best at that point. Because otherwise you get these fun little tactics where stuff's going on. Um, maybe this is... No, that's not a real threat. Um, but yeah, we got lots of fun little tactics here. Oh, I'm sorry. Their knight controls c3. So that's off the table. Um, I guess we'll just take here. And take here. And take here. Uh, and then we're just up material. Four points. Uh, how do I use all of my pieces this game? And that include I want to use the rook on a8 without giving away material. I predict they'll play bishop f3 to stop pawn b5. They did not. Uh, we're not going to play pawn b5. It's just not worth it. Um, I'll defend or activate the bishop this way, even though it allows knight b6, which is annoying. But now the knight's offsides, and I can... I was trying to draw an arrow this way, and I accidentally drew two arrows. We can build up an attack on c4. We can play pawn d5. We have options here. Um, let's also protect our king from this bishop. All right, that's resourceful. All right, we're going to attack this while defending b7. Although defending b7, well, yeah, because this knight's defended, I don't have a rook b8 trick. Otherwise, I might have a pin slash skewer, but I don't. So they're likely considering... Uh, Rook c1 to defend the pawn. I can play knight b3 and knight c5. Um, they're threatening knight takes e7. I am fine with that. Um, because at the end of this, um, they're exchanging their knight off as well. So that's one fewer piece for me to be concerned about. Um, actually, best here is defending the base of my pawn chain, making it the head of a pawn chain. Oh, and then I immediately blunder, giving up my A pawn. Not super smart, but it works out okay in this case, because my opponent was not paying attention. So yeah, here, this is the fork that comes up. Um, I play this check so that I can take on e3 with check, making it easier for me to deal with whatever they'll be doing next. Um, so do I take the pawn? Do I have better? Yeah, we're going to take this pawn and take the other one. So we've defended... Aye. I've not made my task easy here. Rather, this task is easy enough, I don't need to do much to make it even easier. But, um, but yeah, there's probably a better way for me to go about this than what I've chosen. 
So we hit the bishop, so they don't have time to set up some... In fact, if they even got rook g8 here, that wouldn't be a mating net anyway. Um, so we'll push the b-pawn, forcing the rook to abandon the bishop. And then we'll take the bishop. I'll, well, normally the king could come over to oppose this rook and pawn. But here, this rook completely cuts off the king. So, um, yeah, they just have to give away material. Normally you would give away the bishop instead of the rook. Um, and they're trying to construct a fortress. And we are smashing that fortress because this is a speed tournament. Yeah. Okay, can I please see my game? Thank you. Not sure why the page didn't immediately redirect. I don't think I have two tabs open. I do have two apps open. I had only two tabs open. Uh, so they're trying to threaten mate on F2. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, usually I'm playing tournaments and I don't have multiple tabs open. This time when I did have multiple tabs open, it instantly paired me after I went back to the tournament lobby. So I'm starting to see why other players do that. Hmm. Yeah, these tournament opponents are still quite strong, even when I'm not playing blindfold. Um, exchange some pieces. Not because I think I have any advantage here, but um, just because I don't know how to proceed. We want our knight on the king's side. I guess my bishop will drop back to g4 or something. No, b3 looks reasonable. Let's go back to b3 so it doesn't hang later. Oh, okay. Let's use all of our pieces. Stop both of these knight moves. If they play knight e5, I could play f4 to eject the knight. Um, next, I want to use my rooks. So I take the d4 square. Next, I want to take e5. Um, I'd like to keep the queens on for a bit. Just to see if I can get an interesting position here. Or an imbalanced one. And what greater imbalance could there be than all these pieces attacking um, with a long-range attacker here? And that's most effective if the queens are still on. Is this still a target? Um, regrettably, my king's on g1. Otherwise, f4 could be powerful. But if I play king h1, that's kind of risky, too. All right. It finally asked me what I'm doing with my bishop. Um... I guess we'll retreat and then play f4 and e5 soon. This knight's offside, the rook's offsides. These should be nice targets to hit eventually. So idea one is bringing the rook up and over. Idea two is playing f4 and e5. I don't see any way to combine these ideas. Um... Okay, we'll hit this target. Admittedly, I'm helping them a little bit there. Oh, well, that's awkward for everyone. Let's go back. I don't think they're going to take the pawn, even though it does make things exciting. I think this is more excitement than they're ready. Oh god, this is hanging. All right, we're none of us were ready for this, but yeah, they're playing a good game. 
So I do deserve to lose this. Um, I'm just hoping for a big cheapo at this point, because I dropped a bishop. It's going to be hard to find sufficiently big cheapo to make up for a bishop being missing. I'm playing too quickly. Um, hmm. Who am I playing against? 1800. Untitled. So we will continue trying. But yeah, the 1800 is having a good day. Um, they're playing well. Oh, that's a good tactic. Kind of forcing my hand to do something. Let's try to make things interesting. Um... Okay, they're concerned about me maybe having a perpetual check sometime. Let's try to make that concern a reality. Uh, wait, they can just take my pawn. I can take on c7 then. Well, that could be interesting. No, they take h4 with check. I don't even get to take c7. That's too bad. Now they could play like... They could repeat this and bring the queen back. As they do. Uh, I don't want to move that pawn. It's the only thing defending my king right now. All right, so we check. This is not best. I should have just snapped the pawn, but I'm trying to see if I can get them to play an inaccurate move. Um, we've cornered the knight and protected our A-pawn temporarily. Um, hmm, interesting. I have to push on this side to make things interesting here. Right, they're playing a lot of super defensive moves, so we're going to play some crazy moves just to balance things out. Do the best we can to defend everything. Um, let's see. And we win the game on time. So, yeah, had I been playing blindfolded, I might have resigned before that point. We're going to play that one out. All right, let's take this. Let's try to make this King's Gambit exciting for everyone. I don't know about this bishop c4. I've done it quite a few times before, but it's never worked out for when I do it. Maybe it is playable. I just haven't figured out the right way to play it. Um, it just seems like this pawn always comes under attack. Um...
so I'm debating if I want to try to pursue this knight. Um, we'll force them to... oh. Okay, they don't react to my threat. Now do they react? Oh, I see. Um, I guess this was their idea. We'll loosen their queen side to let my rook in a bit. Um, if they play pawn b3, their bishop's still awkwardly placed. Um, right, let's exchange this, because my bishop's awkward on g4. Oh, the whole point is I wanted to play bishop f5. This does not help me play that. Um, hmm. It would help if I could come up with cohesive plans now, wouldn't it? So if they take on f4, I can take on d5. But if they don't, <clears throat> if they don't take on f4, then I don't have a free way to take on d5. It's only if they go through with this that I successfully get my knight active. Um, okay, this works. We'll take it. Uh, I don't think they had planned it this way. All right, back to tournament. Time for one more game, perhaps. All right, we get black. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I always lose when I go Berserk, but we can try it anyway. Uh, here we are playing the baloney. Um, oh, are they offering a bishop exchange? Why would they offer this? This attack is so much stronger if you don't offer that exchange. I don't get it. That's free tempi for me. A couple free tempi. This is hanging. Um, I think f5 is my only way to get the pawn back. If I try to get too clever, things backfire. Um, I think this is... oh, knight takes e4, right? Forgot about that. I'm in such a rush to avoid losing on time that I'm playing atrocious moves. Um, although knight g4 is scary, it's not going to win the game. Mm-hmm. Knight takes e8 is check. So I'm just super hosed. There's no escape. Uh, unless I get a little help from my opponent. But, yeah. Still, I've got nothing here. Um. Mm-hmm. And I die. There's no escape. Um, there's no escape from this. We'll try to use all the pieces. Yeah, it would help if I knew my openings. Um, hmm. Well, screw it. I think this is my best move. It's a rather disappointing one, but I don't think I have better. Um...
Yeah. We are hosed. Super hosed. Just need... No. Don't even have a fork. Uh, sure. Let's offer a pawn exchange, which they won't take. Um, let's block their king out. Hit the rook. Try to stop these from promoting. <laughs> this is desperation, isn't it? Um, there's a check. Knights are such good pieces in Blitz. Never let the knight go. We let the knight go. Alright, good game. Well played. <laughs> uh, so queen h5, queen takes g3 was a move because rook h8 was mating. You're probably right. Yeah. I've been missing things this entire tournament. And I never play... Um, Rather, I always lose when I go Berserk. It's just, I cannot see stuff the same way other people can. And I can't execute the moves fast enough in positions where I am winning, so... It's a completely lost proposition, but we still do it sometimes anyway. For the fans. But since, um... Yeah, I don't know why I sacked that. That looked fun. It's not sound, but since one of my played sound things. So the tournament clock we can see on the wall there, three minutes remain. not super motivated to resign this um, against an opponent who takes time. Oh god, I missed this. I had a chance to get back into the game. One chance, and I blew it. Yeah, this is not great. Let's try to get back in the game this way. I mean, they just moved the bishop and then trapped the knight. That looks pretty straightforward to me. Um, I'll try to make it complicated. No, they could just take that. Alright, they've played well this game. I'm not seeing... I could try to scare the knight. Um... Or try to take the seventh rank, I guess. There are tricks which can sometimes work, but I am pretty super dead lost. If this were a classical game, like a slow time control. I just there's nothing here to save it. Um, in Blitz, sometimes there are tricks. Um, yeah. Alright, we'll just give you that. Nicely played. I'm in a decent mood. So, our team. Team Blindfold. Finished uh, 177th place out of 200. With three participants. Um, at least one of whom was using a blindfold probably through all their games. Probably two of whom. So, this is a really tough event. The fact that we scored any wins, um, even when I was using the blindfold, was uh, pretty amazing. Oh, that is a nice endgame. Yeah, Black promotes a pawn. But can he do it before the tournament clock runs out? That's the question. Oh, draw agreed. I guess I was thinking the pawns were moving the other way. My mistake. Um, so well played to our top three teams. Um, 
Yep. Uh, so who participated in Blindfold this time around? Because I'm thinking I want additional people to help support this team. And if one of us will actually make the effort to go out there and play these tournaments, I should support them. We could use strong teammates. So let's um, appoint this guy, M8011M. And let's appoint him as our next um, uh, team leader. Why not? Um, so let's see, team leaders. M1180M, or M8011M. Yeah, there it is. Correct capitalization. Thanks for supporting us in this uh, mega team battle. Um, yeah, and congrats to everyone who participated. Uh, it was a good event for everyone. Two million moves played. Where else will you find a tournament with so many moves played? And in the span of two hours, no less. Maybe if you go to a bug house tournament, and there are lots and lots and lots of teams, sure. But, yeah, usually you don't see this many moves played in two hours, so. Amazingly, 7% of games were drawn. This is a Blitz tournament. How is it that 7% got drawn? I guess... This number might have had something to do with the draw rate. That's interesting. But yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to everyone for playing. Sorry I got a little bit salty in the middle there. Just getting on this enormous losing streak. But overall, um, yeah, it's cool to see so many teams participate in this event. Thousands of points being scored. A ridiculous number of games and points. Yeah, it's a good way to uh, have fun. Maybe not the best way to promote your team, but in terms of getting the word out that you have a team, but it's a um, good way to uh, play if you do have a strong team who actively participate. And thanks to Lee Chess for allowing me to promote one of my teams in this event. Um, I had considered inviting my other team, the Berserkers, to this. Um, I'm not, I don't really have a good feel of which team's most active. I'm not sure that we would have got better participation with Berserkers anyway. So, I don't know, maybe months or years later I'll come back with another team to one of these. It was a fun thing to do.